Hello everyone, glad to be back. Today is uh, 7th of February, now it's 15 past 2, uh, middle of the day by Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my channel in which I share latest updates on the news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets and Russian language pages on different internet platforms. Uh, there is uh, quite a few uh, very significant and interesting news that I like to share with you. But before I start, let me ask you if I may to hit that like button if you find my videos interesting. Uh, leave some commentary about any topic you like. As I mentioned previously, more likes and uh, comments my videos will have, more chances are, probably, that YouTube uh, algorithm will did not suppress them too much. And please, if you can, share uh, links to my videos or my channel on uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Telegram or any other platform that you are active on. That will greatly increase my chances to reach wider audience and I will be very grateful for this help. That being said, let's talk about news now and uh, I will start with information from uh, Turkey and Syria. As you know, devastating earthquake hit these two countries yesterday. And uh, here TASS news agency is reporting that, uh, according to latest information, in uh, 10 Turkish provinces that were mainly hit by earthquake, more than 3,000 people are dead, 3,419 to be exact. 20, more than 20,000 people are injured and up to 6,000 buildings are partially or fully uh, destroyed. A few minutes ago I also read information about the situation in uh, Syria and um, in uh, western and northern parts of Syria more than 700 people are dead uh, as a result of this earthquake and up to 2,000 people are injured. We can read here in information that uh, right now 14 countries are assisting Turkey uh, and uh, of course Russia is uh, one of them. Russia did send uh, rescue teams already yesterday uh, with uh, special equipment and uh, first aid, not just in Turkey but in Syria too. So Russia is as always one of the first who is giving a uh, hand of help uh, whenever it's uh, necessary. So, of course, devastating, uh, devastating situation in Turkey and Syria. You know. Let's continue with news and uh, still TASS news agency is reporting that uh, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu today uh, did stated that Russian armed forces are conducting successful offensive operations in the direction of uh, Kramatorsk and uh, Uglidar. Kramatorsk, as you know, is the Russian name for Bakhmut. And uh, according to Russian Defense Minister, Russian armed forces already liberated during this uh, offensive operation Solidar, Klishevka, Podgorne, Krasnopolye, Blagodatne, Lyubkovo, а также and, and Nikolaevka. That's uh, what Shoigu says and um, and uh, of course uh, offensive operation will continue and uh, we have some more information about it because uh, if you are subscribed to my telegram channel you probably see many updates yesterday. Let me show you for a sec. This is my Telegram channel and if you want to see updates uh, every day, uh, basically on a you know, regular base, uh, on a regular rate, then you can subscribe to my channel. I mean, as you can see, I do share tens of uh, different news and uh, yeah, it may be useful for you I like this one for example about uh, current situation in uh, in Bakhmut
that's uh, I just shared a few minutes ago on this. And uh, yesterday we did have uh, many informations, many updates about Russian uh, offensive operations, and I will show you on the map, if I may, that according to uh, Russian big telegram channels, as you know, Russian defense ministry is confirming um, confirming uh, new data uh, after a few days once settlements have been taken. That's how they are conducting themselves. But according to uh, big Russian telegram channels, yesterday Russian uh, armed forces did take uh, full control over the Krasnagara, uh, which is in um, in close uh, proximity with Bakhmut. And Bakhmut is here, and Krasnagara. As you can see, even this pro-Ukrainian map is uh, acknowledging Russian success in this direction, but according to Russian uh, big telegram channels, and they have sources uh, in um, those units that are fighting in this area. Krasnagara now is under full Russian control. And I did see some reports that even uh, Paraskovivka, this settlement here, is under Russian control, even though, of course, I have no means to anyway confirm or deny this information. When it comes to Bakhmut itself, uh, yesterday we had an update that uh, units of PMC Wagner not just take uh, establish some new uh, positions in northern part of this city, but they did successfully enter uh, eastern parts, and you can even see on this map that uh, some street fights are going on there. At the same time, uh, units of PM Wagner PMC did enter from uh, south side. So Russian forces now attacking Bakhmut from uh, three directions, and uh, basically all all roads from uh, Bakhmut to Chesovyar, for example, or any other direction that Ukrainian forces still can at least try to escape, all those uh, roads are under Russian uh, fire control. So Bakhmut is in operational encirclement, as you know, and um, it's going to be, it, it, it's going to be quite difficult for Ukrainian armed forces to try and withdraw now. Yesterday, I also see information that um, Russian armed forces did take uh, partial control over Krasne, Krasne, which is also in uh, suburbs of uh, Bakhmut. And uh, I share on my Telegram channel videos with uh, some Ukrainian units that are leaving Bakhmut. Those videos from uh, was from Ukrainian Telegram channels, so probably they are correct. So it seems like some units are uh, withdrawing from Bakhmut, but this is not necessarily means that uh, uh, Kiev did make decision to withdraw forces from this uh, city. Because as you remember a few days ago, Zelensky did uh, uh, made statement that uh, he will don't give orders to withdraw from Bakhmut. Uh, Russian side did have a uh, a success in direction of Seversk too, and this city basically is uh, under partial encirclement, and we may see uh, almost similar situation there that uh, is occurring in uh, Bakhmut, in a small scale, but still. Also, from yesterday's uh, updates, from yesterday's updates, uh, one of the big, biggest one was that, uh, according to Russian big telegram channels, Russian side did uh, establish control over the Marinka, which is this settlement here in suburbs of uh, Donetsk. Uh, this pro-Ukrainian map acknowledges only partial control of Russian forces uh, over the, this settlement, but 
according to uh, big Russian telegram channels, including uh, Slavian uh, Grad. Uh, Marinka is under full Russian control now. So we also have uh, had the information that uh, very heavy clashes were in the uh, direction of Uglidar. Even Russian Defense Minister did uh, say that uh, Russian side has some success in this direction. But for now, Uglidar is still under uh, Ukrainian uh, control. And one more moment uh, when it comes to Uglidar, I did read uh, uh, information today. This, this is it. According to officials of uh, DPR, Donetsk People's Republic, in Uglidar, uh, Ukrainian forces did execute the uh, Polish mercenaries. Uh, as you know, time to time we are receiving information that uh, Ukrainian and Polish forces are fighting each other and killing each other. They have very strange relationships on uh, in, in Ukraine. And this is one more instance when uh, According to this official from DPR, Jan Gagin, uh, one unit of Polish mercenaries were uh, destroyed by Ukrainian forces. Maybe that was a so-called uh, neo-Nazi blocking detachment. Uh, it's possible that Polish unit was trying to retreat from positions and uh, maybe uh, Ukrainian neo-Nazis just... Uh, executed them it's quite possible they are killing ukrainian soldiers so it's not going to be difficult for them to kill polish ones but this is not first time we are hearing this kind of information and probably not not the last let's continue with the news and uh, here in Novosti the news agency is reporting that according to uh, officer of uh, Ukrainian armed forces and this news is based on a article in Strana UA that's a Ukrainian uh, media outlet Russian forces now are controlling more than third of uh, Bakhmut so even uh, Ukrainian media now uh, little by little, acknowledging uh, that Russian forces are moving forward, forward in Bakhmut. Let's continue. Here we have, uh, this is TASS News Agency. This statement from uh, former Russian President Medvedev is, uh, was made just a few hours ago. He wrote on his uh, Telegram channel that all these talks that are coming from Kiev about some kind of uh, Korean uh, Korean example of uh, dealing with the Ukrainian conflict is uh, just a talk for internal public and uh, this skepticism from uh, Medvedev who is a deputy chairman of uh, Security Council in Russia. His uh, skeptical, uh, his skeptical uh, statements in terms of this, uh, uh, this idea that Ukrainian conflict may be resolved in the same way as the Korean conflict was, um, you know, must mean that uh, Moscow, for Moscow it's um, Mm. unacceptable at least that's how I interpret I'm interpreting uh, Medvedev's uh, statement so if Moscow sees uh, unacceptable divide of uh, Ukraine then uh, question is rising what kind of plans Moscow then has for, for, uh, for Ukraine because in my understanding, after this conflict will, will end, at least entire uh, south and uh, east parts of Ukraine will be under Russian control 
from Kharkov to Odessa and then uh, in the direction of Pridnistrovia until Pridnistrovia border. Uh, so Transdenestria border. So it's quite confusing statement from Medvedev because uh, I, I, to be honest, I don't see any way Ukraine as a state, modern in 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 modern Ukraine as a state, uh, will survive because Russia will take southern and eastern parts. Poland will most definitely take uh, some western parts. Hungary will probably. Uh, try to establish control over the Transcarpathia region uh, where uh, Hungarian population is lives. May even Romania get involved and take some parts of Ukraine. So I just don't see how modern Ukraine can survive as a state without being divided between, uh, let's say, Russia, Poland, Hungary and uh, Romania. I just don't see it. Let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, this is Telegram. Medvedev's uh, Telegram. Just I just talk about his post. So I will close this. Uh, let's continue. This is Ria Novosti 2 and we have information here that uh, Russian arms manufacturers are increasing production of uh, Krasnopol shell shells um, 452 millimeter guns these shells are kind of similar to US Excalibur shells they can be uh, guided towards targets and uh, on telegram you know you can see many instances when uh, Krasnopol was, was used uh, quite successfully even against moving targets so it's not surprising that uh, Russia is increasing production of uh, these um, weapons and um, from a weapons manufacturer we have a statement here that uh, Krasnopol Shells will be very effective against uh, NATO Abrams and Leopard uh, tanks, and uh, it's it's true. These uh, these shells will be effective against anything, really. So let's continue. We have a statement from a Russian representative in the UN here. This is TASS news agency still, and he stated. In the UN, that uh, relatives of uh, Ukrainian POWs that are in Russian captivity asking Russian side not to release them or not to exchange them on uh, Russian soldiers because they are afraid that uh, after those Ukrainian POWs will return to Ukraine they will be sent to a front line again. So they prefer them to stay in Russian captivity and stay alive because they know uh, chances to survive on the front line, they will have a uh, minimal. <coughs> so it's quite understandable, really. It's quite understandable because the uh, Russian side um, treating POWs according to Geneva Conve Conventions. When Ukrainian side commits atrocities, and uh, that's one of the reasons why Zelensky's regime should be exterminated. And Zelensky should be put in prison for life. Even though I, you know, I don't believe that he will uh, end up in prison because uh, he will probably flee from Israel and then receive some security guarantees from uh, Israeli uh, government which has quite good relationships with Russia Russian government too but uh, 
in my understanding, Zelensky and all of those animals that are uh, in Ukrainian political and military leadership, all of them should be put in prison for life. All of them, without exceptions. Uh, this is uh, Ria Novosti, and here we have a statement from uh, head of Chechen Republic, Kadyrov, who is, uh, it seems like he's upset uh, because of uh, statements from uh, Polish uh, political leaders, Polish government and actions that Polish government is taking against uh, Russia. And uh, he stated that uh, he personally won't be against if uh, after Ukraine, Poland will be they militarized and they not fight too. I can understand uh, why Kadyrov did stated this because uh, Poland is truly acting very aggressively towards Russia. Poland is just too aggressive, man. It's it's just not normal what Poland government is doing. And uh, I'm afraid if 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 nothing will change. And if Pol Pol Polish society will don't stop the elites to act like crazy, uh, we may see direct clashes between Russia and Poland, and uh, this will did not end well for 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 Poland. I'm quite sure about this, you know. So let's continue. Uh, this is TASS News Agency, which is. Um, writing about U.S. President Biden and his statement that uh, he wants uh, F-16s to stay in, in USA. So he, he did refuse once again to send uh, F-16s to, to Ukraine. He wants them to stay in U.S. But uh, probably we will see uh, when it comes to Jets, we will probably see similar story as, uh, as with the Western-made battle tanks. Eventually, F-16s will probably uh, end up in Ukraine, even though uh, I find it hard to believe that whoever will, whoever will uh, fly on these planes or, you know, will gain any success they will be destroyed straight away. So what is the point to send those F-16s? You know, for propaganda purposes, I can, I can see why so many talks about it. But from military spent standpoint, these F-16s will do just nothing, man. Most of them will, be pro will probably be shut down on, on their first flight, on their first sortie. So, you know, Let's continue. Oh, we have uh, information here. This is TAS News Agency again, uh, reporting based on Financial Times uh, article that uh, Western manufacturers find it hard to cope with the demand uh, on production of ammunition. Uh, because, uh, and we have example here that Ukraine in one day, in a single day, using, for example, 5,000 shells, artillery shells. And when a similar amount of shells uh, have been ordered by some European states for a year. So it's obvious that... Uh, Military industrial complex of uh, Europe, for example, find it hard to cope with this kind of demand. Then it's good for, for God's sake, man. I would love to see all those uh, um, manufacturers, all those companies to be just shut down, let me say this way. So let's continue. Here, this is Ria Novosti is reporting, and uh, let me see time. It's 25 minutes already, so 
I'll try to make this video as short as possible. So we have a statement from uh, official uh, from Defense Ministry of Austria who said that uh, who denied that there is some uh, NATO soldiers in Ukraine and uh, he explained himself that there is no need for NATO to send uh, their uh, soldiers when there is a mechanism which, will can, which uh, can be used and are used to send uh, professional soldiers from NATO member states to Ukraine and uh, this uh, mechanism is that uh, soldiers and officers are leaving army signing contract with the uh, private military companies and then heading heading to ukraine i did say talk about this a uh, few days ago and now we have confirmation from uh, official from austrian uh, defense official that that's what they are doing so it's a plausible deniability if you capture those uh, NATO soldiers. They will say, you know, they used to be soldiers, but now they are just uh, contractors for private military companies. But in reality, we all know that this is just false. They, this, this is just formality to give Western states this plausible deniability. You know, but it is what it is, man. Let them send those armies, man. Napoleon did try long time ago. And that story did not end well for him or for, for France and the allies of Napoleon. Then Nazi Germans tried it. And that story did not end well for them too. So if modern day European states want to try again, okay, bring it on though, you know. If you want to bring it, bring it. But when we bring it, we bring the drama. F you and your MF mama. Is that a Write sentences from Tupac's famous song. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, let's continue. We have uh, Ria Novosti here. And uh, Elon Musk is in headlines again because of his political statements. And this time he said that uh, majority is... Um, did not acknowledging dangers that this uh, constant escalation in Ukraine from Western elites uh, are posing for entire world and to Western societies too, you know, and he's he is right. It seems like majority in the West. Okay, when it comes to politicians, I mean, they, they have been paid. All, most of them are puppets for uh, British and US uh, elites. Let's say clearly this, you know. But uh, when it comes to societies, it seems like majority in the Europe or in the USA, for example, just don't care. You know, and uh, they, because they don't care, they did not realize how much in danger, in how how big a danger or how big a threat is for them that uh, Western uh, elites are constantly escalating with uh, Russia, with the nuclear superpower, for God's sake, you know. Uh, two more, two more 
news and uh, this is it for this video we have uh, a statement from um, uh, prime minister of japan fumio kisida who stated uh, that japan is um, japan wants to sign a peace deal with russia and he said that uh, it's uh, 77 years since second world war and uh, Japan and Russia still don't uh, have a peace deal between them. And uh, if this uh, individual, Fumio Kishida, truly thinks that it's time to sign peace deal with Russia, okay, let's do it. Just shut your F mouth about islands and you will have peace deal. Otherwise, just just stay away because no one cares about you anyway. That's my take on it and probably uh, Russian leadership will say not openly, but at least, you know, they will think that way, you know. If you want a peace deal, okay, let's, let's sign it, but just don't talk about these islands because those islands are Russians. As you know, Japan uh, wants four islands in Kuril archi archipelago. Uh, those islands were taken by Soviet Union after Second World War. And uh, Japan was agreed at the time. But then they have... Uh, changed mind and you know now they want those islands back no no that's not gonna happen man if japan was friendly country to russia they they, they could be some kind of negotiations uh, uh, islands will be russian for example but japanese can uh, for example use water waves or some nature is resources in economical zone around these uh, islands there could be some kind of negotiations you know some kind of deal may be done but because japan is uh, acting like a russian enemy then uh, in my understanding russia should take hokkaido iceland from japan as a compensation for second world war you know that would be quite quite good compensation for Second World War. You know, that's what I will say to them if I was Russian president. If you did not shut the hell up, I will take Hokkaido. And they will understand that I'm not joking. So, after Japan, man, I just, you know, no one likes this country anyway, anywhere. Because of the uh, terrible, terrible attitude towards other countries and other nations. And the Second World War uh, was clear demonstration of that. Let's continue... This is gonna be last news uh, here and uh, oh EU those European idiots man EU officials now uh, saying that uh, even though they have uh, uh, put sanctions on Russian oil and oil products they are saying now that uh, they will not put sanctions in Russian in, in Russian oil if it's mixed with some other oil and they will don't put sanctions on oil products too if they are made from Russian oil but uh, outside of Russia. So, I mean, this is joke, man. This, this European el so-called elites, man, they are just... Uh, I mean, you know... They are shame for U European society. How Europeans can have this this stupid elite man?
how I don't know and this is it for today's video I hope you find it interesting and if so please uh, hit that like button uh, leave a commentary about any topic you like and um, if you can uh, please share links to my videos or my channel on telegram twitter facebook and uh, all other internet platforms that you may be active on that will be great for help and i will be very thankful this is it for now um, have a nice day and take care